Hey, this is Bill. Thanks for stopping by and visiting my channel and watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about starting a family tree from scratch using Ancestry.com. Come along with me. When you first go to Ancestry.com, this is today. I mean, it changes from day to day, but today it's Thursday, June 20th, and this is what they have. Now, if you'd gone on here on the weekend during Father's Day, there would have been some major deal. There was 75% off DNA testing, and there was a 30% off subscriptions given as gifts. So under the gift subscription category, to get a free trial, you just click here. You'll, you'll be given 14 days free of charge. So it doesn't matter which of these you choose. You're going to get a 14-day trial, okay? And just click on Start the Free Trial. Once the free trial ends, you'll then roll over into a paid subscription account, which, as you can see, is pretty expensive. It used to be so expensive for me, and I had a family with a wife and four children, that I could only afford to be a subscriber on a month-to-month -month basis from like Thanksgiving through New Year's Day. So I would do two months. So I'd get part of November, all of December, part of January, and I'd pay my two months, whatever it costs per month, and then I would turn it off and I couldn't use it the rest of the year because I just couldn't afford it. So I know what that's like. It's nice being retired. <laughs> I'll say that. All right, I'm going to log in to my account. We'll get started on a, on a brand new tree. Now, I have three trees. If you go to trees at the top left corner, you can see I've got one, two, three trees that are mine. I have two trees that I'm a guest on. These are trees that are normally locked to the general public, but I know the people who, who these trees belong to, and they've given me guest access so that I can research their information, and I do the same thing with other people. So, but let's go to uh, and manage trees, and this will get you to this page. Now, you can see my three trees. We're going to go here, create a new tree. Now, if someone's helped you out and you've started a tree elsewhere, you can upload it, a GEDCOM file. You can export a tree from another software package and create what they call a GEDCOM. But here we're going to create a new tree from scratch. Now, adding a home person, most people start with themselves. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start with my father, Armin Dempsey Lawler. And I'll do his birth date and death date later. My mother's also deceased, so I'll add Nancy Loyette. That's the name she went by in life. And her last name was Gewen. She's also deceased, and I'm not going to put her information. Now, it's asking me to name the tree. I'm going to call it Lawler's Death Tree. Now, you want to click this, allow others to view this tree. Anyone that's living will be hidden. So I've got over 15,000 people on my primary tree. But if someone, and it's public, it's not a private tree, because I want other people to be able to research and use my research to help them in their research. So if you don't click this, it's going to be a private tree, okay? If you click it, they can see your tree, but anyone who's deemed to be living in other words, with either no death date or they're more than 75 years old, they're going to be hidden from sight. And Ancestry is pretty, pretty serious about their security. On You can trust this. Now click Save. So now we should see the name of the tree in the top left corner, Lawler Test Tree. And we've got two people in the tree, my mother and father. Now I'm going to add my dad's father, my grandpa. His name was Claude Lawrence Lawler Sr. Male deceased. My dad's mother was Eva Francis Edwards. My mother's father, his name was Lester. It's William Lester. He's deceased. And her mother, 
is Rosa. I've never seen this middle name in my life, but that's what it is. Rosa Mary Lou Logan. She's also deceased. The reason I, I, I'm stopping at this point is because almost everybody knows the names of their parents. And of course, they know their own name. <laughs> so you could start with yourself if you wanted to. Then put your mom and dad. And in this case, I started with my mom and dad. And then I added their parents. So most people know this basic information. And if you don't know, like birth and death dates, location of birth and death and burial, then you can ask family members to help. Get on the phone, write emails, send a letter if you have to, and just get started. And this is the easy part, putting in what you know. I realize some of you may, might be adopted or your parents may have uh, died when you were young, but you can still get a hold of this information. Even if you have to right away write to the state archives and ask for copies of birth certificates and death certificates, it's not prohibitively expensive. I think the last uh, death certificate I ordered was like $15. And if you save them up and order, say, three or four or five at a time, the additional ones, if you, say, pay 15 for the first one, the second one might be only $5. And third and fourth and fifth, so you get a real deal after the first. So, you know, it's not impossible. And if, if you think it is impossible, I tell you what, you contact me, send me a message, and I'll help you get started. And I'll at least help you get your parents, grandparents, and maybe even your great-grandparents set up and then turn it over to you. And you can go from there. Usually the grandparents, if they're young, in other words, if they're in their early 60s or less, they're, in other words, under 75 years old, sometimes it may be difficult to find detailed records for them online. However, once you get to the great-grandparent level, there's usually plentiful information there. And so I just, I encourage everybody to have a family tree. There's no reason you cannot do this. It's so simple and it's free. Now, if you don't have a paid subscription to Ancestry, you can still do what I just did for free. They don't charge you to build a tree. They charge you to access their research records, and there are billions of them, billions on Ancestry. Just, just Google Ancestry.com and see what it says about it. You'll be amazed. Now, let's go to my grandpa, William Lester Gew, and I'm going to click on his name, and this is going to open his profile page. Now, it's encouraging me to add his birth and death dates. But I'm going to say I don't know these. So I'm going to search on Ancestry right here. See what we get. All right. There we go. Find a grave index. Do those names ring a bell? Look down the list. Rosa Mary Lou Loyette Lawler. Okay. So that's definitely it. So we'll go there. And we're going to say save to William Lester Gew, and that just pops up automatically. So this is, this the right-hand side is the information that I've entered in. And notice it's slightly different. Here it's listed as William L. Gew, and I've got the full name. But everything else is new. Notice the green tags, and they're checked, already checked, which automatically adds them to the right-hand side. His date of birth is 24 March 1904. Now, I prefer to go with the abbreviation for the month. So if you click here in this box, it's going to pop down and let you click on the abbreviated version. Same thing on here. Right now it says United States of America. I don't need that. I want it to say Morse Bridge, Tuscaloosa, not the word county, and Alabama. That's an abbreviation. So if you click on the place name, it lets you do the same thing. Same thing here and here, city, county, state, and country. And then his burial, 
Columbus Lounge. I'm also going to put the date in there. Here's what I do for the date. I'll explain later why I do it. You know his death date's 16 November. So there's a dating convention called abbreviations like AFTER, A-F-T is the word AFTER, A-F-T period. So you know he was, he was buried after he died. So if you put in AFTER 16 November 1980, then you'll be good. He might have been buried on the 17th, the 18th, the 19th, the 20th. You know it's after the 16th. They're not going to bury you the same day you died. There's his parents, James Orlando Given. Do the same on that. Same here. Get rid of the United States of America. Now on, on here, now I'll talk about that some other time. Same thing. Burial after 20 Feb. 1937, Mary F., date, I forgot to, Mississippi, USA, and Lowndes County, Mississippi, USA. And I'm always going to put the date. You don't have to do this, but I'll show you the trick in a minute. After 3 March, 1969, there's his spouse. 9 March, Pickens County. 7 March, 61, Bellefontaine, Webster County, Mississippi. And let's put the burial date. Later on in your research, if you actually find the burial date, then by all means, if you want to, go in and change it. It's not a critical factor. You know, most people really don't care about the date they were buried. It's not, to me, it's not that significant. On the date, after 21 July 2023. And then my mother... After 28 Jan. So how would you know when someone was buried? Well, you might have a, a leaflet or a program or something from the funeral home. You may go online and read an obituary. and It says so-and-so is going to be laid to rest on such and such a date at such and such a cemetery. That would be a good source. And then you can cite the source that you got the information from. That's critical. Now I'm going to save this. This is as far as I'm going to go right now on this tree. So let's go to the top and go to Tools. And this is where you can view the tree. Okay. Now, down at the bottom, this is kind of historical overview of who I've been working on this morning. So let me click on my dad, my dad's name. And right now, my, with my dad in this top position, you can see that I've just got his mother and father. If we click on my mom, now you can see her mother here, Rosa Logan, her father, William Lester. And then already, because we went to find a grave for these, this information, we've got James Orlando Gewen, his father, and his mother. Now notice Ancestry offers you prospective ancestor information. It's guessing using, uh, I'm sure it's using artificial intelligence. And it's proposing that my mother's great, my mother's grandparents' names are Mary and Buchanan Logan and Nancy I. Henderson. Now, truth is, this is accurate because I know my family. However, I wouldn't trust these unless you've got information that proves the link. Don't dare add this stuff. You know, it'll, it'll mess your tree up. Do the work. Don't just take the easy route. You'll end up with a massive tree. If you take the easy route, you get a massive tree, and most of it will be absolute garbage, conjecture, and fabrication. So don't be guilty of doing that. Anyway, I'm going to stop right here because this is, this is really the beginning of a, of a family tree adventure for you. And I hope that you'll get started on it right away. And if you need any help, drop your question in the comments below. I'm going to say bye for now.